Hi, and thank you for joining us for our Summer Reading 2022 Oceans of Possibility craft series, Beaded Animal Keychains. This year we are featuring three sea creatures. We're going to have a shark, a turtle, and a fish. Each one of these kits will be available. Um, supplies are limited, but while supplies last, you'll get a kit that's at Center Branch that you can go ahead and grab. Uh, it'll each come with instructions. And each one's gonna have instructions for the individual craft. So you'll have the fish instructions on this one. Uh, and then it'll also come with a small bag of supplies. Each bag will have some cord and a variety of colored beads that you can use. And each of the instructions will tell you if there's a particular pattern you need to put the beads in. So these are of course gonna be available starting on Tuesday, June 21st. And <coughs> and as, like I said, supplies are limited. Just as an aside, um, I'll probably mention this in every one of the tutorial videos. However, the only thing I will say you definitely need for this craft from home is going to be a plastic bowl because pouring these beads in a plastic bowl is going to save you from having to chase the beads around your house. To make glow the fish, you'll need the instructions and your instruction sheet will actually have just the picture of glow the fish, not the rest of them, but this is just where it came from. Uh, so you will need your, if you didn't, if you got it, take, if you received a take and make kit, you should have a length of cord and some beads, not this many, but enough to do your craft. From home, you're going to need a pair of scissors. Okay, just a nice, decent pair of scissors. It could be craft scissors, but this is what we have. You'll need a ruler or a yardstick. I had this nifty one that um, unfolds like this that we can use to measure off if you don't have, if you end up buying the cord. I like to have it measured. It should be measured for you uh, since each kit is for every animal. And on this instruction sheet, I want to see if I can show it to you. Glow the fish needs three yards of cord and 87 beads. And this is one of the ones that needs a certain pattern at the front, at the top of it. And that's going to be, um, you're going to have enough beads to do that craft. We should have enough beads to do exactly what this picture shows. However, if you'd like to change the pattern up, that is up to you. You can play around with it. And get Sherman and June out. And I'm going to pull out our, this is our, our all done fish. Okay. There she is. He is. Whatever you want to call him. That's what we're going to end up with. In your take and make kit, you will also have a keychain. This is just a little clippy clip. You can use a ring keychain if you have one around the house. That's fine too. But so first we're going to do is uh, in case we're going to measure out. And like I said, if you got a take and make kit, you should have uh, this already done. But uh, I think I might have just pulled off way more cordage than I need. <laughs> of course I did. Ah, okay. We need three yards of cord. So if you have a ruler, that's nine feet. If you have a yardstick, that's three yards. Um, again, if you've got a take and make kit, you probably already have three yards exactly, but you know, it doesn't hurt to check and make sure. I find with all of these projects, um, all these projects, the, they always give you or recommend way more cord than you actually need. So, you may need, they may say you need three yards, but then you end up only really needing like two and a half. And I think that that's just in case people be tightly or just so you have enough to thread through. And then, well, I guess I didn't pull off too much. <laughs> and that's three. So once we have about three yards, and again, this doesn't have to be exact, but close to three yards of cord. Wrap this back up, get back in there. I'm going to show you a little pro tip that I use when I'm working on my projects. It makes things go a lot more smoothly. So first things first, we're going to find the ends and you're going to just pull these through your fingers until you find the end. That's a, yeah. Put them together. You don't have to make them exact, but you know, kind of close. And then simply pull the string, the, the cord through your hands until you get to the looped end. It's going to look like that. When you find the looped end, you're going to do what they call, I guess, a slip knot. 
or I'm not sure what kind of knot you'd call it, but you basically, the easy way to do it is put it through the keychain like this, pull it enough so you can get two fingers in, and then just pull the loose ends through, being careful not to shift them too much, make sure your ends are still relatively even, and you know, they got a little uneven, but that's close enough, that's fine. Because like I said, they always give you a little extra. So you wanna just snug that tight and make sure it's nice and tight on the keychain. Okay, and here's where my little hack comes in. You can do one of two things, a couple things. Um, you can either put a piece of string and tie it on a doorknob, you can tie it on a bedpost, you can even loop it around your toe if you are that brave. Um, what I've done, is actually I get a piece of duct tape or packing tape and always ask a grown up before putting tape on any furniture. I think that, that should be a disclaimer. Do not do this without a, pair, a grown up's permission because sometimes furniture doesn't handle tape being put down so well. I'm going to tape this to the table. Um, and you can, if you have a table like a Formica or linoleum, you can tape it down to that. This will keep this in place so that you can tug on it a little bit. I mean, you, you shouldn't be, you don't want to tug on it too hard, you'll end up pulling it off, but this should keep it in so that you can have enough tension and have your hands free. Again, you can hang it from a doorknob if you put a piece of string on top of it, just a loop. You can put a doorknob, bedpost, your toe, whatever is around, do what you gotta do. So then, we're going to pull out our beads. Um, I recommend, get a bowl. It doesn't have to be fancy, it can be just a cereal bowl, soup bowl, something. And you want to dump your beads in. Your bag should come with enough beads. Um, and probably a couple extra just to be on the safe side. Um, it'll come from this, you know, lovely stash here. So, um, from here, we're going to start working on our pattern. As you can see, the first line, and I'll put it upside right so you can see it better, is two and each line is going to show you how many beads and for the first few rows you want to be mindful of the colors the dark one's going to be the blue and the clear ones the empty circles let's see if we get to focus focus the empty circles are the yellow um, you could choose any color you want if you're doing this at home without our take and make kits and you're just doing this on your own you can use whatever color you like as long as they're different colors uh, so the clear ones are um, yellow and then down here at the bottom we have more. So each row is gonna show you how many to put in each one. And each row, this is a very simple pass, uh, just a straight pass through. And I'll go through how to do that real quick. Let's see, I think you can just see, yes, okay. So we're gonna start with two dark ones, so two blue ones. So I'm just gonna get my two blues out. Find the end of your cord. The first couple passes is a little weird because you've got so much cord to play with. When you get to the end, it's a little easier because it's shorter. But that's, you know, how it works. So I'm gonna pull this one up, make sure it gets all straightened down. And so what you do is you take your two beads that are on here. Let's see if I can get you to see that. See, they're on the cord. They running in this way, that this is the top. What you wanna do is take the end and run it the opposite direction through these beads. And what essentially you're doing is creating a two-sided loop. So a two-strand loop. Um, And I like to make sure it's straightened out. You might twist the cord a little bit. This first row is gonna be a little bit fiddly. And then when you're done, it'll look like that. You'll have the strings coming out either side and you're good. The next row is gonna be three of the dark color. So blue in this case, like I said, you can use whatever color combination you like if you have that home. You could even, you know, if you have enough beads, you could even try doing yellow with blue but I don't think you're gonna have enough beads because there's not a lot of blue ones in the flish. All right, so you see if we go like this, I'm gonna flip it over like this, grab the other string or cord. I'm gonna put it through the other direction. And so we go on following the pattern and it's pretty much the same as this either way. You just make sure you follow the pattern all the way down to the tail. So if you want to fast forward <clears throat> until I get to the tail, uh, we're gonna fall, We're gonna actually fast forward this um, video itself so that you don't have to sit there and watch me string beads for what'll end up being half an hour, probably. 
Uh, oh, real quick before we get moving on, this oh, these beads are stuck together, like literally. Haha, -ha. I win. Uh, so this one is going to have you start with <coughs> your pattern, and you're going to do two blues and two yellow, and you'll see on your pattern when you get it. Um, and all of these patterns are also going to be available on a link on the bottom of this the uh, YouTube video that you'll have a link to our Google Sheet that has all the instructions, written instructions, and the physical pattern. Um, so you don't have to worry about if you missed a Take a Make Kit or if it's now September 2022 and you missed the boat. That's okay. You can still act, uh, participate in this activity. You might not be able to win one of our cool prizes, but you can definitely participate. See so, you from here. Again, sometimes you'd have to twist the cord because it gets a little jammed up, and that's personal preference. Some people don't care if there's twisties. I like mine to be nice and straight on the sides because that's just how I like mine. So from here on out, we're going to work on our pattern again. And we'll, I'll keep the video running until the pattern's done, so I'll walk you through that. And then um, we'll go on a fast forward, skip the boring type thing, okay? You. This so, if you are starting your pattern, say say you're reading it from left to right, like you're reading a book. You always want to start the pattern from the side where it's like if you're reading it. If it's starting on this side, you want to start it from that side of the pattern. Um, so if it says blue, yellow, blue, yellow, yellow, you want to string on blue, yellow, blue, yellow, yellow to get it to go in the proper order. Blue, yellow, blue, yellow, yellow. So once you have that on there, as you'll see, and this is something you can do before you string it through, you can always bend it and make sure that it matches the pattern on the page because that's where it's gonna end up sitting. Once you're happy with that, take the other cord. Like I said, it gets a little awkward this time, right this, uh, at this early in the project because the cord is so long. And then always you have one end of the cord that gets all types of curled and you have to like feed it through carefully. But you know, crafting. And so now we have that row and we only have one more row of pattern because this is gonna be its eye right here. Do -do. See, yellow eye. So now we're gonna do three green, or not yeah, green, three blue and three yellow to kind of finish that off. After this, we'll just have a bunch of rows of increasing and then decreasing yellow until we get to the tail, in which case we will slow the video down again and you can watch the step-by-step -step tutorial on how to get the tail fins because they are a little bit fiddly and they take a little bit of work practice to get used to because it's not a um, straightforward like the rest of the fish. All right, so we got our three. Again, we're gonna fold it over, make sure it looks right. When you fold it over, and it does, matches the fish, and find the end of my cord. And if you get really confident, you can feed it through all the beads at once. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and that's okay. From here on out, we're gonna do just straight, uh, you'll have uh, rows of beads. It's gonna start with a six row and then a seven, back down to six, five, four, three, two, two, three, four, and then we'll start with our um, tail. If when you have your copy at home, you can you want to write, you know, count them ahead of time and write next to each row instead of having to count each time, that is totally up to you, and I think that's a great idea, actually. Um, only reason I didn't do that on this one is because it had to be photocopied and put onto the document. So, uh, yeah. So let's get going. We're just going to fast forward through and do all of the increase rows and the decrease rows so that we can get to the tail. And again, you can do any pattern you like. From here on out, this is, you know, your, this is your party. You can do whatever kind of pattern you like. The... The instructions say yellow, but you can do whatever color or pattern you have available.
Sometimes you mess up and you gotta take a beat off and that's okay. So we've gotten down to our tail and as you can see I've gone a little off script and that's okay because creativity is the best and you'll probably have an extra couple of blue ones in there that you can do. So as far as our fins go, you're actually going to, instead of doing a normal pass through like I've been doing with both strings going through the beads, we're actually going to be using each string individually and I'll show you how that's done. So when you look at the, oh, sorry, when you look at the pattern you'll see that there is row of two, a row of three, a row of two, and a row of one. So one plus two is three, plus three is six, plus two is eight. You'll need eight beads all together. You can follow this pattern or make up, oh, or make up your own. Let me actually let you see that because I realized it was out of camera. So you'll see you'll have a pattern that's gonna have one, two, three, and two on um, your beads. So one plus two is three, plus three is six, plus two is eight. So you'll need eight beads all together. Doesn't matter the pattern. You can use this pattern. Again, start with the top as the uh, first ones you bead or string on and go to the bottom, or you can do whatever pattern you like. If you went off script <clears throat> and you're running low on your beads, you might have to, and that's okay too. So I'm going to follow the pattern of two blue, three yellow, Two blue and then one blue, so three blue next. Ah, come back, come back. Just trying to run away. Okay, so once you get to this point, you're gonna start from the very tip. You're going to fold it under the single bead under the two, because remember it's one and then two. Give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. Don't be, don't make, let the beads get super tight. You wanna have some play because when you fold it, you're gonna have some extra beading or cordage on the side. So you wanna make sure you have enough space for that. You can always tighten it up later if you have to. So now that we have this around, this other string, the other side, is gonna act like the other string when you're doing your normal beading. So we're simply going to thread through from the other direction to kind of lock these beads in place. Again, don't worry if it's a little loose, we can always tighten it up later. That should probably be all right. So then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna fold it back up, like just kind of doop, 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 doop. Um, fold it up like this and lay it like this, okay? I'm gonna do the, these beads against these beads. And again, come in from the other side because you'll see the strings coming out this direction anyway, so we can just loop it through. And like I said, it's just like you're doing your normal pass through, except instead of using a second string, you're using the same one and just kind of figure eighting it back. Figure eight configuration, if that helps. So I've got to the other side. And when you pull it snug, it should be 
like that. See? So now I'm going to do this one more time to a two. Yeah, the first row is two of these blue ones, and you're going to go in the opposite direction. Now you may think, oh my goodness, the string's going the wrong direction. How am I going to get it back? There's a trick. I promise it'll all work out. Come on. And sometimes talking to your chord makes it work better. It doesn't actually, but it makes you feel better about it. So, you know, whatever works for you. Okay, there's that. And what's going to end up happening is we're going to actually flip it again and put it this way. But that's, for now, we'll leave it like that because it's not going to stay. So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to do the second fin and we're going to do the exact same thing. So two, three, and then two and one. So same thing, we can watch it again. We'll do it again real quick and I'll do it a little faster and with less talking so you can just see how it's done. Come back, these beads like to run away. Yeah, don't forget you to start whatever beads you want in this closest row you do first. And I totally did that backwards. Everyone makes mistakes, that's how we learn. Okay, so two. I'm just gonna re-thread this. I totally did it backwards, and see, you gotta be careful. And double check, because everyone makes mistakes. And your fish fin would look awful weird if you put it on backwards. Not wrong, just if it's different than the other one, it can look a little off. Again, give yourself some space. And we're gonna do our folding and our stringing. Sometimes, especially when they're, if you don't give enough space, it can be a little tricky to thread it on. Because the beads don't want to have enough space for you to get through. Okay. That's good. And this time through. So now we have our two fins and we're just going to flip them this way. And then we're going to take one more bead to kind of tie them together. Put it on one side and then we're going to do a normal pass through just like we do with all the other rows. And run this cord through here. All right. And this will pull these fins in tight. And then all you do is do a double knot I usually do a double knot anyway. Um, to secure it, I usually do two. And as you can see, there's plenty of string left over. So like I said, don't, don't stress out if you don't have it even, or if you know you only have two and a half yards, you should be fine. Go ahead and trim it off with a little bit of distance, a little bit of maybe half an inch to an inch of string at the bottom, just so it doesn't come unraveled. A couple options you have. Uh, you can either have uh, some good craft glue and put a dot here just to kind of hold that knot in place. Usually it stays fine, but just in case you want extra security, if you're having it in your backpack and you, you know it's going to be shifting around a lot, a little bit of glue. If you have a grown-up or if a grown-up trusts you with a hot glue gun, hot glue works really well as well. It's going to hold it a little better. Um, that, of course, is up to you. Let's uh, free our glow the fish from his restraints. Pull off the duct tape. And here we go. We are all done with our Glow the Fish beaded keychain pal. I 
hope you have fun making your beady keychain, pal. Whether you may glow the fish with his little eyeball, or you may shell the turtle, the sea turtle, or if you made Sherman the shark with his awful funky dorsal fin. This one was a really fun one, but it is a little bit tricky. So hopefully you did fine and that video was very instructive and helpful for you. I do hope you have fun and you did a great job. So before we go, I want to go over the summer reading prizes that you can earn by participating in our 2022 summer reading program. The kids have uh, some prizes. We have a stuffed fish, a stuffed sea turtle, a stuffed octopus, an orca whale, and a penguin. And all of these come with a corresponding book. Our prizes for teen include Book of the Month Club for six months, an owl crate for three months, a Tokyo treat crate for three months, a maker crate, a eureka crate for three months each, or a global play pass for a year. And if I'm not mistaken, that is the one where you can go to various activities around town for free for a year. So that can be a really fun one as well. For adults, it's even better. You can get an acetate annual pass, a book of the month club for six months, a 12 month family membership to the National Aquarium in Baltimore, or, or a 12 month friends membership for the War Museum. It's a local museum, or you can also get the prize of a Chromebook or a laptop. All of the adults, they simply have to log 10 books. So you read 10 books over the summer, uh, audiobooks, ebooks, physical books, they're all fine, they all count. Um, the teens and the children have activity based badges that you can do. It does also involve, if you wanted to read a book, you can also read a book to log one of them, but most of them are activities, just so you know. Um, when you get your summer reading bag, when you register on the library, you'll get a book very much like this, and each one's going to have a game board. You can use this game board to keep track of what you're doing and then bring it into your local library and we'll uh, log it for you or you can log it yourself at Beanstack. And there will be a link at the bottom for the Beanstack um, of this video. Uh, six to 11, and then teens as well. And bef but uh, yeah, and they have like little coloring pages and they have jokes, like some jokes in here. Some are really cute. I'll read one as a spoiler. How do you make an octopus laugh? With 10 tickles. <laughs> anyway, they're all silly like that and we love that. Um, and also any activities that we have going on are also going to be in the back. Um, if you'd like to check out our podcast, we also released a podcast uh, talking about all the activities that are going on in summer reading as well if you wanted an overview of that. Um, all this is also available online on our events calendar and we do hope to see you there. Thanks.